Special Counsel Jack Smith intends to use former President Trump's White House cell phone data in his 2020 election interference trial. A court filing from yesterday reveals federal investigators have gained access to White House cell phone records. A technical witness who examined the phone for usage information is expected to be called to discuss the data during the trial. Prosecutors charged former President Trump with four criminal counts back in August. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa joins us now. Great to have you. Let's start off with what kind of information has been reviewed by this technical witness expected to be called to testify. It's evidence based on special counsel Jack Smith's latest filing that he has compiled phone records of what President Trump uh, was doing and the former president, then president, was doing during and after the Capitol attack on January 6, 2021. It's clear that the special counsel has what is called metadata, which is the location of a call, the length of a call, whom that person was speaking to, but not necessarily the content of the call. This provides a real window, though, for a prosecutor to understand who Trump was calling and when, to try to understand his intent, his role in talking to different people related uh, to what was happening on January 6. And recall that CBS has reported there's been a over seven hour uh, gap in the phone records provided to the National Archives of White House calls by the president on January 6. Uh, but that gap can be filled in by personal records uh, of the personal phone that the president, the then president, was using. And it's, it's evident that the special counsel has the records for that personal phone used by Trump. Bob, the now defunct January 6th committee recorded that gap at, that you just mentioned of nearly eight hours in Trump's official phone logs on the day of the riots. Talk to us more about this and the former president's potential connection to so-called burner phones. So we know that Trump, for example, on January 5th, 2021 called people like Steve Bannon, his former strategist, called his lawyer Rudy Giuliani. They were huddled at the Willard Hotel across the street from the White House, and he conferred about what was going to happen the next day. He made different calls on January 6th to people like then Vice President Mike Pence. And all of these calls made on the official line, on the landline at the White House, have been recorded by the National Archives. What's not clear is whom Trump spoke to beyond those official calls on the landline. Did he use an aid cell phone? Did he use another cell phone? Trump has said in a statement to CBS News and others that he did not use so-called burner phones, doesn't even know the term. But his former national security advisor, John Bolton, uh, now a Trump critic, has told CBS that he believed Trump did use other people's phones during his presidency. And so for the special counsel, it's not just about getting those official landline calls, it's about mapping out all of the calls Trump was on, whether it was his own personal cell phone that was not a government phone or whether it was the phone of an aide. Bob, put it into perspective for us just how significant this cell phone data might be in terms of the outcome of Trump's trial. It, it is hard to downplay the significance because instead of having this gap like the January 6th committee had when it was trying to piece together Trump's phone calls, it will have the data that can show who Trump called and when. And if you're a prosecutor, you can then call that person in to testify under oath about what Trump said, how long Trump spoke, what exactly he was asking them to do. So even if they don't have Trump's testimony as part of this investigation, they can talk to almost everybody else. So you add text messages they have to this. They already have Mark Meadows for sure among many others, based on our reporting. They have text messages. Now they'll have phone data. They can talk to people Trump called, and they can have long depositions and testimony for, about people inside the White House at that time. So they can understand what Trump was doing on the phone and what Trump was doing in person based on eyewitness testimony and on data. It's not an open and shut case, but it's a very complete preparation for the prosecution. All right, Robert Costa breaking it all down for us. Thank you so much. Thank you.